All right, good morning and welcome to Dafyomi, a new Seder, Seder Nashim. We're starting today with Meseches Yavamos. This is a really celebratory occasion. Uh, I just made a Siyum slash Kish for my daughter, the birth of my daughter, plus the Siyum on Meseches on Seder Moed. It was really a spectacular event. I had pretty much a bar going. Oh, listen, uh, I'm, I, I'm uh, rebranding myself as... Kosher, Kosher Ben Sinaleng. I'm Kosher, Kosher version for Seder Nashim. Uh, I even have something I served at the Kiddush. We have some Jack Daniels, the best one, number seven, plus uh, Coca Cola. It's actually called a Jack and Coke. Um, let's look at this. I have a uh, cocktail glass, which would be perfect for Jack and Coke. I am refraining from drinking this. We are learning a new Masech, a new Seder. This is the kosher just after, the kosher Ben Sion Lang. And of course, because I have the stuff in front of me, but I refuse to drink it. Now it's kosher, kosher entertainment. Now you could all enjoy and watch my share. And of course, because we're starting a Lamdesha Seder and a lam, very Lamdesha Mesefta, we're going to be reinstalling uh, Ben Sion, Ian with Ben Sion. Uh, you don't want to miss today's Ian with Ben Sion. It talks about the concept, which is pretty prevalent in the couple of first off, I'm about essay do chaloza say, and why the Mishnah uses the word lotion poter sarosayim, sarosayim, how exactly does a patra sara, the Gemara will discuss it, but we're going to get into some of the lumdus, the tifa lumdus, the tifa lumdus uh, of today, uh, and you should check that out. Check that out, it's a separate uh, video, Ion with Mencion. We're putting it out shortly. Uh, but first, let's get right to the daf. Let's dive in to Seder Nashim. Mesechus Yavamos, arguably one of the hardest Mesechus in shots. So, let's get started. All right. Mishnah says, Chamesh Shrey Nashim Potro Sarosayim Vesaro Sarosayim Nachaliza Umina Yibo Masofa Olam. There's a ptor. Now, normally in the midst of Yibum, just to backtrack for a second, if you look in Parshas Kisisa, not Kisisa, Kiseitse, Kiseitse in Dvarim, I believe Perich or Chavdalet, I think it talks about this, it says that if your brother, you have a brother, we're going to learn as a brother, you have to share a father with that brother, not a brother, you just share a mother, uh, and he dies, unfortunately, in your lifetime, and... He has a wife, but no children. He has children. There's no mitzvah of him. He has no children. So, if he has no children and he has a wife, now his wife is a widower, a widowed, widow. She's a widow. Widower is a man who loses. Uh, no, no, he's a widow. He, he, yeah, the wife is a widow, right? The widower is when the wife dies and the man is still alive. So, your, the brother died, <coughs> and now he has. His wife, so she's Omedes Li'ibom, normally uh, creates, we'll see, a zika, there's a connection between them, and there's a mitzvah for the husband to go and marry, right, marry his brother's uh, wife that's still alive, and the, Marist, the, the Torah talks about uh, to give a name to his brother, his brother didn't have any children, so it should serve as a remembrance for his brother that he should have offspring from his wife. Uh, we're going to see how this really is not really relevant, this mitzvah nowadays, because uh, it's a machlok, it's tanoim, whether what people can do with the Shema, they do it for the right reason or not, or they're just machavim nos when they're, when they're with the Yavama. Um, of course, it's also not practical nowadays, because you're not really allowed to marry more than one wife, uh, unless you've had to marry a bonim. So therefore, <clears throat> it's a bit of a problem. So this is not really even not really done nowadays. There is chalitza. Chalitza is if the brother decides he doesn't want to marry the Obama. He has that option. The Torah gives him that option. It's also in the Parsha. Then uh, the widow, she takes off his shoe uh, and she spits in it. The shoe signifies, the shoes of a person signifies his wife. If you're wearing fancy shoes, it means you have a fancy wife. <laughs> uh, takes off his shoe spits in it and says a pasta and says a uh, in the Torah and then the chalitza is done which means that also breaks the zika it breaks the connection between the Yavam and the Yavama uh, that is an option 
and we do that sometimes nowadays. Chalitza is done, is, is performed sometimes, because you can't do Yibam nowadays. We're not allowed to do Yibam, according to the Rabbanim, but Chalitza you could do. So, but this Mishnah is talking about where there's no need for either Yibam or Chalitza. And the cases are, we're going to see what these cases are. Basically, all the cases are where your brother is married to a woman who is an erva to you. Meaning, if she's married to a woman, uh, your brother, who you share a father with, uh, is married to a woman who's an erva to you, and you're not allowed to cohabit, to you, cohabit with her. Uh, so you can't, there's no yibam, there's no chalitza. The Torah exempted you from yibam and chalitza because she's an erva and she's chayav karis, an erva. Related means Shkai of Kares. So Chi of Kares, we're going to delve into the Eme Ben Sion, how exactly this works, this Mishnah, the fundamentals of this Mishnah work. Is the Pshat that it's an essay, it's not Dokha Elosa Say, Makam Kares, because even if the essay is a mitzvah of Yibam, there's Elosa Say, you can't be with an Arab, but it's also Kares, punishment of Kares, uh, extinction, you die before you're 60 years old, uh, if you cohabit with this woman. So therefore, is the pshat? Well, we'll get into the lambdas. But the problem, if there's an essay, is not do chalose makom shirish karis, and therefore there's no mitzvah of yibam or chalitza. What are those cases? Fifteen cases, and also as an additional facet to this mishnah, it also potters a sara. Sara is a co-rival, a rival wife. And let's say your brother is married not just to one woman. Of course, it doesn't apply now. He's married to two women. So one woman is an erva. The other woman is not an erva to, to your to the brother. Let's say I'm the brother. I have a brother. I do have a brother. Uh, he has children, so it wouldn't apply. But um, if the brother is married to an erva, and he's married to a second wife who's not an erva, so not only is uh, there's no mitzvah of yibum or chalitza by the erva, but also the tzara. We're going to see even more extension. Tzara, tzara. We'll see what that is. At the end of the Mishnah is an exemption. What are those cases? What are the fifteen cases? Ve'elohen pito. If your brother marries your daughter, right? Your brother is allowed to marry your daughter. It is niece. Uh, but if your brother dies, you can't marry. There's an erva. You're not, a man is not allowed to <coughs> marry his daughter. Ubas bito. Uh, similarly, your granddaughter, the daughter of your daughter, Ubas bino, and the granddaughter of your son. Again, these things are all asr. In the Torah, you look it up in Parshas Achrei. Most Parshas Kedoshim talks about these things of the different forbidden ervos, arayos. Basishto, also uh, the daughter of your wife. Right, let's say your brother married the daughter of your wife. He's allowed to marry. He's allowed to marry the daughter of your wife because he's not related to your wife. But you're not allowed to marry the daughter of your wife because the Torah says you're not allowed to marry a, a woman and her daughter. You have to be married at the same time, the woman and her daughter. Bas <coughs> Bino, Bas Vito, also their wife's, uh, your wife's uh, grand's, granddaughter from your son, from her son, or granddaughter from her daughter. Again, even if you're not allowed to marry a woman and her granddaughter also. That's also included in the Torah. Chamoso, your mother-in-law. Let's say your brother married your mother-in-law. He's allowed to marry her. Be'em Chamoso, or the, he, your brother married the mother of your mother-in-law. Be'em Chamov, or the mother of your father-in-law. Again, these things he's allowed to marry, but if they fall to you for you, you're not allowed to marry them. Achoso mi'imo. Let's say uh, your mother, uh, you, have a, you have a sister, but only from your mother. So your sister only from your mother, so, and your brother marries that woman, <clears throat> uh, he's allowed to marry that woman, uh, but you're not allowed to marry the woman because she's your sister. And the Torah says you can't marry your sister, even if you only share a mother or a father. But Achos Imo, your aunt, Achos Imo is talking about your aunt. Now, if it's your aunt, how could your brother marry it? It's talking about obviously where there's two separate marriages over here, meaning your mother. Uh, married your father and had you and your mother met, was previously married to a different person and had your afterwards married a different person and had a son from that marriage so your brothers uh <coughs> through uh through the fact that you share uh you share a mother or a father and <coughs> um and he's allowed to marry the sister of your mother because so your your father married one woman and he married another woman. That's the case. Not, not you're married. So you were the product of your father and your mother. And your father married a different woman. So he's your brother from your father. You should both share a father. So the, technically, Yibam should apply. But um, then your brother marries your mother's sister. Now it's not his mother's sister because he has a different mother, but it's your mother's sister. So therefore, he's married to her. So for him, it's okay. But then when she falls to Yibam, when she's an erva, you're not allowed to marry your aunt. Ba'achos ishto. 
right? Let's say your brother, your two brothers marry two sisters, right? This is common sometimes. Two brothers, my brothers marry two sisters. So therefore, just like you're not allowed to, uh, when, when you're not allowed to be married to two sisters, if you didn't know this, if you can have multiple wives, um, if it was technically possible to have multiple wives, you're not allowed to marry to two sisters. We know that Yaakov Avinu did marry two sisters. Bachan Leia, um, the Mepharshim explained how he was allowed to do that. Maybe only the Ramban says, maybe only outside of Eretz Yisrael. Torah only applied, format and Torah only applied to Eretz Yisrael. You're not allowed to marry her. But Eishas Achim Imo, also your brother's wife, he shared a mother. If you shared a mother, right, like we said, Eishas Achim Imo is, um, meaning she's technically, uh, she's technically your sister, not your sister, I'm sorry. Your brother married a wife, uh, right, and you, you shared a sister, so, um, you shared a mother, I'm sorry. So, even though he's allowed to marry the woman, uh, since you have the same uh, mother, so therefore, um, there's no mitzvah of Yibam over there. Uh, <clears throat> the Quran continues on Beis and Beis, the Mishnah continues. Let's say your brother got married, you're a young guy, your brother got married, he's 20 years old, he got married, and then you're born the year after. So, and he died, uh, he died before you were born. So the Yavama was created before you were born. You're born in the situation now where there's Yavama waiting for Yibam. That's not a mitzvah of Yibam. We're going to learn in the Gemara, the Gemara Pater, that it's not called a mitzvah of Yibam. You have to be, it says in the Torah, it says, uh, what does it say in the Torah? It says, uh, it says a pasuk in the Torah, the beginning of the parsha Yibum, that says uh, Baolamo uh, has to be in the same world. You have to be alive at the same time as when he dies. The brother dies, he has to be alive. Kalaso, the fifteenth one is your daughter-in-law, right? Your brother is allowed to marry your daughter-in-law, your son's wife, uh, but you're not allowed to marry your kala. So once he marries her and then he dies, so you can't marry your kala. Hare elu pocho sarosayim sarosayim. Minachal Litsa or Mina Yibum and so for all and they pater from Khalitsa and Yibum. There's no Khib Yun Khalitsa, right? So therefore it's important now that you wouldn't have to do Khalitsa. The Khulan, but all these cases, see Mesu Omiyanu, let's say uh, uh, they died, Omiyanu, the woman, the woman she died, meaning she died before the husband died, Omiyanu, or she did Miyun. Uh, Mian is when a girl gets married off young, her father dies, and her mother or brother marry her off. It's only a Nisun Midrabban, a marriage Midrabban, they're Masakin, and she get married Midrabban, and turns into a marriage that right. So when she becomes of age, 12 years old, and she has a Bia with her original husband from a young age. So if she does Mian, Mian is when she comes of age, she has the opportunity to be mine to refuse to marry on a biblical level her husband. Uh, she does that before. Uh, her husband dies. On his garshu, or there was Gerishin, her husband was Magarish's wife. Oshanimsu islandist. Or it happened that the wife was found an islandist. She was found to be a woman who's incapable of reproduction. Um, she never really matured. Where, and I believe in Perak Aral discusses what are the simonim of islandist. She doesn't have breasts or she doesn't have uh, her, call, her, her voice is thick or things like that. She's more like a man. So obviously, if the woman died, there's no way to do yibum. But the the the, the, the over here, the reason the Mishnah mentioned it, Sarosayan Mutaros, is because of Sarah. Let's say your brother's married the two women. One is an erva, and one is a Sarah. One is a rival, and she's not an erva to you. She's not forbidden to you. So if the, the, the erva wife dies before the brother dies, and then the brother dies, so therefore there's no tour of the Sarah being put from yibum. The Sarah now is mutter. She is... Ayev and Yibum, or you do a chalitza. Rita Yachalomor bechamoso veim chamoso veim chamav. An eyeless is obviously not applicable when it comes to the three cases mentioned in the Mishnah of, of doing Yibum for your mother in law, or your mother in law's mother, or your father in law's mother. Because if they had kids already, they had your wife, so obviously they're not eyeless. Eyeless are in, in, incapable of reproduction. <coughs> Oshamino Ketzat. What is the case there? Mimayan Ketzat. Pocho Sarah saying. Oh, sorry. Shashnim so island is Oshamino, right? You can't have the case of a mother in law 
doing meon because if she would have your wife, she has she became of age. Normally, a woman's only capable of having children once they become of age, mature. They have shtei saros and they uh, have they have simonim and they have shonim. So then, it's no longer a case of meon. She's no longer aktana. It's no longer a case of meon. No. So then, those three cases: your mother-in-law, or your mother-in-law's mother, or your father-in-law's mother. It's in case that's not there was it wouldn't be a case of meon. Kids at Pocho Sarah saying, What is how does it work? They part of the stars. How is a bito akal gal rayos? I am in suas lacham. Right? One of the 15 arayos were mentioned this Mishnah are married to your brother. Velo isha cheres. And he doesn't have just one wife, he has a second wife, which is not an error with you, a mace. And the brother died. Shem is a bito ptura, just like your daughter, or any one of the 15 arayos are potter. Kaksarosa ptura. Also, the sarah, the rival wife is potter. There's no chi of yibum or kalis, you don't do anything. Halcha Saras Bito Venisis La'echa. What is the case of Saras Saras say? Let's say, uh, right, your brother died. He left a daughter and a Sarah, a rival. Now, the rival uh, wife, who's not an heir to you, and now you have, we're introducing a case where there's three brothers, right? Even applies not just with two brothers, let's say there's three brothers. The other brother, right, who it's not his daughter, so none of the, there is no Ptor, the third brother, it's not his daughter, it's only the first brother's daughter. Sorry, <coughs> married to the third brother, Cheres, and he has another. So the third, third, third uh, brother has one wife, which is not an Arab, and now he takes on the sorrow of the uh, the second brother who died. Now, so now there's no Arab still. Umes, and then the third brother died. Hashem starts bito ptura, just like the sara of the boss. But the kach starts starts ptura. Once him, that sara of the boss marries the third brother, so the pot is not just her. She's not just potter from even to the first brother, but also uh, her rival, the rival wife with the third brother, is also potter from the first brother for Yibum. I feel in May, even this happens a hundred times, hundred brothers would still be the same, same thing. Case that he may to start same mutaros. What is the case where if the sorrows died, your mother? Right, it's only relevant when he has two wives, one's an heir, one's not. Meso bito and his garsha. Let's say before the brother died, his daughter died, or she became divorced from him. And then your brother died. Then your sorrow, there's no ptor. The ptor only happens when uh, she's still, there's still a zika, there's still the bas, still. The brother died, and he was still married to the erva, so therefore the erva potters the other sorrows. Anyone who could do meon, the low meaning in a case where meon, like we explained before, the daughter gets married at a young age, uh, married off by a brother or mother, so it's only the Rabbana. When she comes of age, she has the ability to mine. If she's not in uh, she has yet to make a decision about this, so we're stuck over here. Because meon, because the Nisuik Tana, the Gemara said the end of almost, is relevant on a Darabana level. They're considered married according to the Rabbana. I mean, the Raisha, they're not considered married because only the father has the ability to marry off his daughter young. That says in Mishak's Kedush, only the father can marry off his daughter young, but when she's a Ketan, a mother and father can't, but a mother and brother can't, but they could do it with the So she hasn't been Mayan yet. So if she's not been Mayan yet, so therefore technically, and she didn't do a Bia yet. If she did a Bia, then it would become a Nisu and Del Raisa, and uh, she would be considered to be a full-fledged wife of the brother. But if she doesn't do me, she hasn't done me on yet, so therefore she's sort of in this quasi uh, phase where she's not she's married to Rabbanam, but she's not married on a Doraisa level, so therefore you can't do Yibum because uh, she's not married, she's uh, she still is uh, the, the daughter, uh, the daughter who didn't do me on yet. She married your brother. She didn't do me on yet, so therefore she's married the Rabbanon to you. So you have to do. You can't do yibum because on the rice level she's not married to the brother. Um, right? You can only do yibum when there's you know, she's married to the brother. Uh, she's 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 not married at the rice level, so you can't do yibum. And but you have to do chalitza because there is a zika with the Rabbanon. There is a connection with the Rabbanon because with the Rabbanon she is married to your brother. So your daughter is married to your brother. Since she is married to your brother, so therefore. Uh, obviously, the daughter you're not going to marry because she's an Arab and she's potter, but it doesn't potter the Sauron because she's still married to the Rabbanon. So therefore, you have to do Chalitza. The Rabbanon instructed you to do Chalitza, remove the Zika uh, because it's necessary to do it. There's no Torah of the Sarah being potter in that case. 
I hope you enjoyed today's shear. Please stay tuned for Ben Bencion. And I hope people will start joining my shear uh, on Dafyomi because, first of all, I give a very clear and concise Dafyomi shear. It's 20 minutes in. We did basically a daf over here. It's under a half an hour. Um, clear, concise, to the point. Um, I'm trying to make it more kosher, not joke around so much. And if you tune into the shear, you will have extra insight into the upcoming Yod Ben Sion, which I believe, they're listening, there are a lot of Dafyomi shear matter there, and there are some Dafyomi shear which do it very quickly. Um, some of them really, really fast. Some of them, I'm not really sure how they do it so quickly. Um, but uh, you'll get a special insight into something which I believe is unique, which I don't think anyone else really offers. And Ian Shear, from a guy like me, who learned in Shear for many years, learned all these Shears from Sakhta, learned them be Ian. You'll get access, special insider information into what's upcoming in the separate video, you know, then Sion, which I believe is unique to me. I don't think you're going to find a share like that anywhere. Definitely on YouTube and probably not on the internet. And Ian share in eight minutes. We're going to try to do it around eight minutes. Uh, really try to keep to that. And I'll really give you a taste for Lumdus. Try to be more on the beginner's level. And then we'll delve a little deeper as the minutes go on into a deeper way of looking at it. But I give you the fundamentals of Lumdus, which is really important for any person learning Dafyomi uh, and wants. Maybe, you know, Daf Yomi goes very quickly. You do a Daf a day. It's barely you get it in. Sometimes you go on a train ride. Sometimes you only have 45 minutes an hour. But if you want to get a little depth into your learning and maybe develop, most people do Daf Yomi more beginners than they're learning. They haven't learned Shas so many times. They definitely have learned Ian many times, years in Yeshiva. Or if you have learned years in Yeshiva, you want to get back into the flavor of Ian. I start from the most fundamental Chakiras, very simple fundamental Chakiras and then branch out a little bit to make them a little more on a professional level. So you get both of that all in eight minutes. Plus we'll be having hopefully some guest uh, lecturers, some guest shiurim by all my new friends in the Kolel over here because we made a big seum today. I offered a lot of different cocktails and we had a bottle of 18-year-old Shivas Regal. Um, it was a big seum for our Seder Moe and also for the, my daughter's birth sorrow. And it's going to be great. Sara happens to actually be the same name as the word Sara. It's spelled a little differently in this Mishnah. All right, I'll see you in Eon Ben Sion. Catch me there. Bye.